Honestly, it was traumatic. I've never been through something like that. An eviction notice served. I'm kind of freaking out at the same time because I'm like, what's happening? Like, you're coming in here mad, angry. Like, what did I do? Tonight, the mix-up that now has a couple calling for deputies to be held accountable. Plus, we could be hours away from the FDA greenlighting a COVID vaccine. State leaders and the president-elect are making plans for distribution. A family without their father and grandmother this holiday season. Grief is a hard thing to go through. An 11-year-old pens a heartfelt letter to Santa. That I was sad and that I wanted my happiness back. And now we're turning to you so you can help this little girl have an unforgettable Christmas. First tonight, we hope you enjoyed the 60s while it lasted because a cold front is moving in. Yep, snow for the high country and for here in the metro. And that's why we're under a Denver 7 weather action day. We're going to kick things off tonight with Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Hi, Mike. Hey, good evening, guys. We don't want to get anybody too upset about this for tomorrow morning. It'll be fine, but we want to give you a little advance notice. The 60s are done, folks. 68 was the high temperature today in Denver, 64 at Fort Collins. Greeley was at 61, but now we have winter weather advisories. In fact, for the southwestern mountains as well as the Sangre de Cristos, as a cold front comes our way from the northwest combined with a storm system dropping in from Arizona, and that's going to come together over Colorado and bring us some cold and snow. So the colder weather starts tomorrow. It'll be dry in the morning, but the snow develops later in the afternoon. Snowy and cold Friday, probably the Friday morning drive will be the toughest, and then a snowy and colder pattern taking us into the middle part of December. Tis the season. It's going to feel a lot more like it coming up in the next day or two. The full forecast details in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Mike. We'll see you in a little bit. A local couple shaken tonight after they say they were aggressively and wrongfully evicted from their apartment today. The Adams County Sheriff's Office admits they were in the wrong place. As Denver 7's Gary Broad explains, these women are calling for accountability from both the Sheriff's Office and the property management company. Chantel Jacobs was sleeping when she heard a pounding on her door. It was the Adams County Sheriff's Office. So I kind of cracked the door and he's like, he kind of like budgets his way. At this point, Jacobs says she had no idea why they were there with their guns drawn. Hey, like I'm scared. Like, can you tell me what's happening? And he finally tells me and he's like pretty be he's being rude about it. He's like, this is an eviction. Do you know what an eviction is? It's an eviction. Jacobs described one of the deputies as hostile. I tried to pick up my phone because I was scared. I tried to call my mom. He went, he like kind of like slapped the phone out of my hand. He was like, if you make a call, you're not grabbing anything. I'm just going to throw you out. Problem is deputies entered the wrong unit at the Tuscan Heights apartments. Adams County Sheriff's Office tells Denver 7 management at the apartment complex gave them the key to the wrong apartment. And when they realized they put the couple's belongings back, also saying nothing Nothing was stolen or damaged, but Jacobs and her girlfriend, Lisbeth Escarcega, say there was damage, including to their iPad. Black bag in the kitchen with a uh, broken plate, there's ranch and stuff all over shoes, uh, our remotes, our iPad was in there shattered. And they say the rest of their stuff ended up on the lawn. Honestly, it was traumatic. I've never been through something like that. Like, and then it's embarrassing too. The two women finally were allowed to see the court order, which not only shows the address for the apartment building next door, but it also shows a man's name. Jacobs mother took this video the family that order was meant for. They were evicted later in the day. I just want them to make sure they check the addresses, make sure they ask names, make sure that they just don't go in there and unrightfully take somebody's stuff out. Adams County Sheriff's Office says they are internally looking into the matter to make sure a similar situation doesn't happen in the future. We reached out to Tuscan Heights management for comment. So far, we have not heard back. Reporting here in Denver, Gary Broad, Denver 7. Tonight, we can finally report a number below 4,000 for daily cases in Colorado, but this number, 3,700, it's still too high, still not where it needs to be. There are nearly 1,700 Coloradans hospitalized, either for a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19, and tonight, 83% of ICU beds are in use. We'll be closely watching that big FDA meeting scheduled for tomorrow because by this time tomorrow night, we could have official FDA authorization for the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine here in the US. Today, Canada joined the UK in authorizing the vaccine and the state released its finalized vaccine distribution plan. So the first to get the vaccine this winter include Colorado workers in COVID-19 wards who have direct contact with patients, staff or residents at long-term care facilities. 
Healthcare workers and first responders are next on the list. By the spring, we could see high risk individuals and essential workers receive the vaccine, and that includes people 65 and older, grocery workers, school administrators, anyone who is immunocompromised or has a pre existing condition. We could see widespread distribution by the summer. The federal government is allocating vaccines based on population. Last week, Colorado requested more than 46,000 doses of the vaccine to start us off. President elect Joe Biden laying out his plan to reign in the pandemic in its first 100 days. That includes 100 days of wearing masks in federal buildings, distributing 100 million doses of the vaccine, also safely reopening schools. Biden also formally named retired General Lloyd Austin as his pick to lead the Defense Department. If confirmed, General Austin would be the first black defense secretary in United States history. A reminder tonight for restaurant owners in Adams County. You can officially start applying for the one time $10,000 grant through the county's new stability program. You have to prove serious hardship or loss from capacity limits or the lack of indoor dining. RTD is calling on the federal government tonight to provide more financial relief for the transit agency. Their funding through the CARES Act could run out in a few weeks, and they worry what that could mean for an agency already looking at a $140 million budget shortfall. Salaried employees are taking pay cuts next year. Workers saw furloughs this year. And really, public transit nationwide is in trouble. With looming cuts in service, there's concern that could hate, uh, hurt our nation's economic recovery. The theory is, if service is reduced now, well, those routes might not be there when this pandemic is finally over. 36 million people in the U.S. depend on public transit. Obviously, ridership is down now, so revenue is down now. In Washington, D.C., for example, the transit agency there losing $100 million a month. In New York City, $16 billion in cuts. We talked already about RTD's budget shortfall. And in San Francisco, just the light rail dealing with a $33 million hole. It's really time for our political leaders to step up uh, and provide the funding that transit needs. A lot of governors are thinking about a reopening strategy for the spring and summer of next year. Uh, and they need to make sure that transit is there um, to be a critical part of that reopening strategy. And then another troubling indicator for public transit, demand for used cars is booming. So there's fear that people will permanently ditch public transit after the pandemic. And what about the implications on housing? Cities and towns are building apartments and housing complexes near these transit hubs. And with more people working from home, demand for that kind of housing has dropped significantly. Now, a federal bailout could be a long, long way away. A public transportation funding bill has passed the House. That was earlier this year, but it has not made it to the Senate floor. This Christmas, a little girl won't have her father or her grandmother to celebrate with. They passed away in a house fire over the summer. 11-year-old Brooklyn survived. Well, Denver 7's Addie Guajardo tonight shows us a very touching letter this girl wrote to Santa with one wish, happiness to ease her pain. And tonight you can help. On the corner of Harlan Way in Arvada, there's a magical sight filling hearts with hope. It's just amazing. A home Santa can't miss. It's where his biggest fan and helper lives. Every night I send the letters off to Santa. Every day new letters arrive, but one in particular, heavy with heartache, caught Amber's eye. Santa, I've been suffering from depression and my anger issues have been bad lately. So what I'm trying to say is I shouldn't get presents and can you please stop my sadness? Santa sent his helper on a mission. He said that I needed to find her. With the power of Facebook. I'm 11 years old. Amber tracked down Brooklyn who penned that heartfelt Christmas wish. I was sad. And that, like, I wanted my happiness back. A fire ravaged her home and left her family in despair. Our dad and our grandma passed away during the fire, but Brooklyn got out. Thanks to our amazing neighbors. A survivor filled with grief, but not alone. My dad passed away in a house fire and I just immediately wanted to protect her. A guide for a little girl who feels lost in a world of pain. I feel like whether it be my dad or Brooklyn's dad, that they brought us together. Forming a new bond and a new wish list. Brooklyn loves to do crafts, so she wants paint sets, 
watercolors. The simple things that help paint a life full of love. I would just want to wrap this year with a good note. Now you can bring some joy to Brooklyn this holiday season. She's asking for letters. They can be dropped off here at Santa's mailbox. We'll have all the details to this address at the denverchannel.com. In Arvada, Addy Guardo, Denver 7. He's my best friend. He lost his companion, but one man's mission to find a new emotional support animal turns into a nightmare. Tonight, Contact Denver 7 is working to get answers. For a third day, we are making sure your generosity, your donations are helping local wildfire victims rebuild. Thanks, Channel 7. Thanks, viewers. From the heart. And state leaders are reminding everyone, decorate your homes this holiday season with wildlife in mind.